sort of challenge what, what happened in 1996. We have amazing strikers in England now, Ihana Choi, Wobi, Igalo, who we all thought were going to probably be in the team. Um, their clubs have said no. And the team going to Rio now might not be as great as Mofos expected. Um, first of all, before we go to uh, their expectations, what are your thoughts on this same club country rivalry? Because Steven Siasia, I mean, mm -hmm. who, who is the coach of, of, of the under-23 team, didn't actually fight. He said, well, if they don't want to release them, it's fine. I'll, I'll go with other people. Should he have just backed down like that? Is this something that you think was good enough? Um, it's, for me, it's still club over con I mean, country over club. Should be the case. Yes, yeah, should be the case. But the Olympics is not a FIFA competition. If it was a FIFA competition, they wouldn't have had any choice. The club would have released the players. But it's a, you know, they call it Olympic competition, IOC. So they are not obligated to release any players. I understand that um, he spoke to Dick Law, one of our uh, chiefs in Arsenal, and they, they were saying, let's see, let's see politics. Man City, they weren't picking his call. So he kind of didn't have any choice. But so for someone like Alex Iwobi, I'm sure he was itching to play for Nigeria. Okay. I can understand why they didn't release him because they are not sure. You know, that's not, they're not, like you said, they're not signing players. Maybe they don't keep the one that they have. But again, it would have been a, a, a stage to showcase himself and also probably nail a place in the team. That's what I feel. For someone like you, um, here in Asher, he might be thinking, okay, Guadalupe is here. I need to impress him to play. So he might not even be kicking for it. But I'm sure those boys that want to play for Nigeria, it is still club over country. Um, country okay. over club. But there needs to be some sort of negotiation. I don't really blame Siasia. He knows the rules. So he just tried. He made some calls. They didn't free them. Fine. I will still back the boys. I will still pray that they do well. Again, it's a team sport. Yes, some stars are missing. But with the leadership of someone like Mikel and his experience, I'm backing them to do well. Were you surprised that Mikel went, though? Because, I mean, it, it, Chelsea is also a club that's, that's getting a new coach. It's, he's going through a transition. Mm -hmm. He's one of the longest serving members of the team right now. And you would expect that he would have stayed back to at least impress uh, Conte, that's, yeah. that's, that, that's the new coach. Yeah. Why did you think he left or he would uh, want to leave at a time when yeah. the team is just taking shape? He already knows pre he, and all of that. He's not going to start. He already knows he's not going to start. So N'Golo Kante is there. He's going to start. Matic is already have, ahead of him. He already knows. I mean, he was playing for he didn't care. Probably he must have discussed with Conte and he's like, okay, you're not really part of my initial plans and then you can go. I'm sure he must have had that discussion. And he's like, I don't think he has gone for the Olympics before. No, he missed out in uh, uh, London. London, exactly. Yeah. So he can just say, okay, let me just lead the boys. And again, he's the team Nigeria captain as well. So it's a team of honor and joy. So he chose his country first, which is good. Interesting. Mm -hmm. So what do you, you think we're going to go for? I mean, we've won a gold, we've won a silver in the past. We've won mm -hmm. a silver. CS actually won a silver for us yes. in, in Athens, was it? Yeah, it was. And, it, yeah, yeah. Athens, yeah, with, with uh, Osazia. Osazia, yeah, I think, yeah, yeah. yeah. So that was, we also came really close that time yeah. as well. So we won a gold, we won a silver. Are we going to get there this time? What are you thinking? I mean, Neymar is here is going to go with Brazil. Even though Brazil these days is not no, the Brazil we used to know. Mm -hmm. um, but they are hosting. Yeah. So they're definitely going to be a favorite. Mm -hmm. um, what do you think is going to be our chances this time? Oh, what are semis? I mean, I'm sure we'll get there. Because... You might get a medal? If... Yeah, of course, yes. Because the mentality of the boys, they really, they really want to fight. They are going there to showcase their talents for foreign scouts and foreign clubs to notice them. So trust me, they will play very well. They will up their game. And I'm sure they will come back with something. Yeah. If it dep again, you are talking about the type of manager. It depends on the manager. You, you are my United fan, I think. And you know how uh, Sir Alex will do the hairdryer treatment. If Siasia has his own hairdryer on, I'm sure the boys will do well. Yeah. And with Mikel there, with his leadership and experience, yes, they will come back with something. Going forward now, the Super Eagles have been on a steady decline. <laughs> <laughs> I hate to say that word. I mean, since 2013. Even at 2013, we won, we won the tournament. People were still like, no, mm. maybe they were just okay. You know, uh, we haven't really had that burst of excitement with people watching the Super Eagles in a long time now. But people started hoping, okay, the under-17 brought a new crop of boys with Mwakali, you know, Ihan Acho and all of them. And the 20 boys also won the African Nations Cup, mm. you know, went to the World Cup, mm. didn't do so well. Now they also messed up completely, you know, losing to mm. Sudan they at home and yeah. didn't qualify to even defend their title. Mm. But we seem to have a young crop of players now. For the first time in a long time, we have about five or six Nigerians playing in the Premiership mm. actively. Yeah. I mean, there was a time when we didn't have anybody playing actively, probably just Mikel at the mm. time. Yeah. You know, so players are coming, starting to come out again. Uh, how long before we start seeing a Super Eagles that we should start getting excited about? One or two years, if give and take. If the football house, NFF, can get their acts together, if they can get 
they are planning together, they can get their venues together. I still think they should bring back football to Lagos. Lagos is the spiritual home for Nigerian football. Probably the series or maybe somebody is uh, somewhere jazzing Nigerian football because it's no longer in Lagos. No, because if you look at it, when we used to play in Lagos, the fans and everything used to do very well. Since they moved this, they said doing political football matches, one in Kaduna, this, you're bringing somebody from Europe, cold Europe, to play in Kaduna, hot Kaduna, you expect him to do well. So sometimes it's not about the players. But there's nothing wrong with, with players across, with fans across the country getting a feel of the team. Of, I understand it should be spread around, but we should consider where the players... If you're playing um, local uh, players, they're used to the sun, fine. But you can't bring Alexi Wobi from cold London to come and play under a hot sun. Even when he came, he was, he was purging or something like that. He had food poisoning. And Arsenal fans were asking me, please don't kill our boy because he was one of our best players last season. So you need to take care of the players. You need to know the condition of the players before you can play a football game. It's not about saying, oh, Kaduna will host us, they have the money. Yes, state governments like to showcase themselves and host players. But if we can get that correctly, we can um, get um, the manager or the coach. Then fine, within one or two years, we should be back to our normal best. Who are you most excited about going with, with, with the Super Eagles now? Who's exciting you? Young, young prospects. Uh, I'll wrap my boy, <laughs> Alex. Will You've called his name about eighteen <laughs> yeah, times. Yeah, so I'm, really, I'm really impressed with the boy. The boy's dedication. Not Ihan Acho. No, maybe yes. I'm impressed with Ihan Acho. Don't get me wrong. Ihan Acho, even um, uh, Igalo. You know, I've watched them play. I'm impressed with all of them. They are all doing well. But there's this thing with Iwobi that his dedication is always first in training. There's this discipline. You still know that yes, he's been in England. He was probably he was born in Lagos, but he went to England when he was one. But he still has that Niger discipline mentality that nah, we have to really work hard to achieve this. And the boy is quite humble. So I've had close contacts with him, and I know him technically. I've I had close contacts with um, Wakali that we signed as well, Kelechi Wakali. And you see, these boys are really good. With time, one or two years, then just play well, go out on loan, play regular football. Then you see your uh, our national team uh, blossoming. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you very much. Um, well, thanks for being here today. It's, it's always nice talking about Nigerian football. Um, I was going to ask about our defense, but we don't have a lot of time for that because it seems to be our weakest point, and it still is for the most part, which is why we might score as many goals but don't seem to be able to hold our back. But thanks for being here today, Michael. Thank you very nice. Thank you very much. Nice talking to you. We'll take a break now and be right back. Talking more right here on Robin Minds. Please stay with us. It's, it's not, it's not